Welcome back, y'all. Day two of the Red River Clash. Um, that we ran it again, but I have a different assortment of people with us today. I actually have Ajax, Regdor, and Isaac with us. And in this panel, it'll be going over video games in an increasingly digital world. In 2020, the whole world shrunk and enlarged at the same time. Many of us had to stay home or our world shrunk significantly. But lots of folks expanded their digital presence. That being said, everyone here had a huge digital preference previously. So this thing, whole panel is going to be talking about the increasingly digital world from the perspectives of folks who are super plugged into it. Uh, and to begin with, I'll uh, be introducing themselves right now. And first, we'll go with Isaac. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Isaac. Uh, I'm an uh, electrical and computer engineering uh, freshman. Uh, at UT, um, games. Uh, it's the lull between the between the games. So I guess we're all just waiting for the new, the new stuff to drop in a couple weeks. Um, and then I've been busy with midterms. So. No, I feel yeah. you a thousand percent. I mean, I've been waiting for Halo Infinite to drop out for about a year again for this delayed thing. So I can only imagine everybody else is waiting for their games. But Rekdor, if you could introduce yourself. Yeah. Hey, everybody. My name is Roger Allen. I'm currently a junior here at OU studying creative media production. Some of my main games right now is continually League of Legends, uh, Terraria, and I play Valorant a little bit here and there, although I'm, I'm not very good at shooters, but it's fun nonetheless. <laughs> Hey, we all try. I mean, I'm a controller player trying to play a tactical FPS half the time, so I'm terrible, but it's a fun time trying to get it down, and if you have those good moments of those one taps. Now, Ajax, if you could introduce yourself for us. Hey, guys. I'm Jack Board. Uh, I'm a construction science major currently at the University of Oklahoma, class of 2024. Now, main games that I'm playing right now, uh, Back for Blood, uh, COD Zombies, as always, Call of Duty Warzone, it's Halloween. You gotta be playing Phasmophobia, and you gotta love Civilization Six. 
Yeah, no. Hey, I mean, the, the good assortment of games compared to a lot of the games that I've just been kind of circling around on mine, which is just Valorant and League of Legends recently, just jumping back and forth. But now, what do you say uh, meaningful online relationships and experiences in your life have come from gaming, Isaac? Um, definitely. Uh, uh, like... I, um, I it's hard to uh, I guess explain how how like crucial they've become to kind of the uh, relationships I've built. Um, most uh, I've met most of my like friends or people I hang out with through games, um, and I'm doing this because of games and stuff, um, and um sorry for being but um yeah like i'm even like um gaming um i don't know it's really hard to explain how kind of crucial gaming has been to like to where i've come in life uh i'm a ec major because of gaming um because i uh, um and such no yeah i mean you just have so many meaningful relationships that it's really hard for you to like kind of pinpoint it down because it's just kind of revolved around your whole entire like uh just up uh, it just seems natural to you so you're like what whenever you try to pinpoint you're like well they're all meaningful everyone's like all your relations that you build over the different games you've been playing to just kind of messing around in the discord just talking it up with your fellow like longhorn gaming people so I exactly. understand completely. So Regdor, do you have any meaningful online relationships or experiences in your life that you've come from gaming? <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I was thinking about this question, it always goes back to uh, something I, I saw Mike write one time where he said, uh, I was here before the internet. And that, <laughs> and that kind of hit home for me because when I was younger, you know, uh, we didn't have the internet yet. I was, I was a part of the generation that grew up and watched this explode at the same time. So back in 2003, 2004, a friend of mine introduced me to RuneScape. And old school RuneScape, as it's known now, was, yeah, that was my first online game. And my mom was super awesome. She got me into gaming. We played uh, Legend of Zelda together. We printed it from Blockbuster, really dating myself here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, she got into it too. And my mom actually met my stepdad through RuneScape. And because of that decision, what's blockbuster um because that decision it it uh caused me to move to tennessee which in turn got me uh into the military and that was like the first big meaningful relationship i think that came from online gaming um and then the second half of my life as i started to exit out of the military i found a few communities uh, i'd gotten big into league of legends heroes of the storm and i found a few different communities that were into that so what that was for me was as I kind of was reclaiming a spot in society and stepping away from one institution into another, it really acted as like the nucleus of community and friendship and being able to find somebody else that I had just a common ground with. And I think eventually led me here to OU. Oh, I mean, that's just what it's all about. And it, as you are a little dating yourself with Blockbuster, I will say that I am the guide from between the boomer and the zoomer. I'm in between to where I also loved Blockbuster growing up at times coming on that way and did play RuneScape. But it was probably a little bit later, just towards the back end of their lives kind of cycle on that one. Now, AJ, do you have any meaningful relationships that came through it or experiences? Yeah, definitely. So back in... 2013 when black ops 2 zombies came out uh my friends and i uh at the time we weren't friends but we met, met one night in a cod zombies lobby and we started playing and then at the end of that we we're like okay these guys are pretty cool and then we kept on playing after that and then next thing i know these two dudes are like my rider dies with me every step of the way for wow eight years now uh <laughs> and then our groups expanded since then but my like my entire like all my friends and stuff like my closest people that i know are all all came from the video game community uh 
and then even after I came to college, because a lot of my friends went to o- OSU, uh, I didn't know many people, so I joined OU Esports because I was like, oh, this looks like fun. Uh, let's do video games, other gamers. And from there, I met a lot more people <laughs> through the COD community as well. Uh, COD's with, been with me with a lot. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely. Uh, a lot of relationships have come from the video games. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely say off of just having these really like those couple few people that you game with consistently and you have a good time, like everybody has those nostalgia days of remembering some of the old games that they used to play, uh, such as like at least what one of the meaningful experiences for me in my life was gaming was staying up like all super late and kind of trying to stay quiet. So my mom doesn't hear me play some Halo 3 with my buddies in the lobby, like us just hey, playing just a normal duck hunt, like just having some good times, like laughing our heads off but then trying to not be so loud so that my mom doesn't hear me and tell me to go to bed and all this so those are just some of those little moments that i think that we kind of just get past to that like we're still like they just kind of forget about they brought joy to us at that time and it really kind of were some building foundation blocks for us on those little game night moments but since COVID has uh, seen an increased interest in computer and gaming from people in your life that you wouldn't have expected, such as like teaching your grandma how to use Zoom or like your dad got obsessed with like Among Us because he's a teacher, different things or any of like the Internet trends. Is there anything, Isaac, that uh, that you have seen uh, through your time with all this increase in things that you wouldn't have expected to kind of pop up in this past year? Well, I basically live on Discord. Um so uh whenever people want me to like you like text them or something i'm like i don't don't know so it's annoying uh so i managed to to convince my family to to go on discord so i can be lazy and never leave discord ever hey Um, no way you got the whole family on board on discord that's awesome (laughs) yeah um so that was nice uh and then um since I'm a fr- you know I'm a freshman, so normally like you know when you graduate high school, you kind of lose touch with a lot of people you know in high school uh, you know in high school, uh, but because of COVID, um, you know March we all migrated online, so it's been nice to that I haven't really lost touch with a lot of the people I knew from high school because of that. Um, I've been able to keep in touch, uh, and then I I was a- and then because we were at home stuck at home, I was able to. Um, play a couple campaigns with my dad. So we played through like Titanfall 2. Um, so that was, that was really nice to play with That's him. So um, and then uh, also like uh, Modern Warfare 2019. Um, and then we were going to start um, Battlefield 1, but we never didn't really get around to it. No, oh, that's sick. I mean, just playing, even just playing story modes with your d- dad seems kind of like pretty sick to me because I mean, at least with my dad, like uh, he supports video games and everything that kind of goes around it and he sees us playing it, but uh, he's never really like touched it other than like we played Jackbox. Jackbox was our thing that it finally connected the the my parents to games a little bit more playing some of those mini games but i mean as he said like doing it like a good transition to start asking roger about his things because he <laughs> out of it a little bit of a uh, a little bit earlier in his life that he had any of this so like how is it your time adapting or if you found anything interesting with uh this online presence now yeah it's always interesting because i think as uh as the older person here like gaming used to be an online presence used to be a very siloed thing of like there was only certain types of people maybe it was a a friend of a friend uh you talk at school and find out you both like uh video games or both like this but it wasn't very networked in the sense that i could just go online and find you know an lfg for a game and then make friends that way um but especially over covid it was really interesting to see friends that maybe played games uh, casually or every once in a while get a lot more into it and call me up and say, yo, man, like, I am trash at Warzone, but this is awesome. What kind of headset should I get? What sort of stuff should I be doing? How can I stream on Twitch? I want to be the next Tim the Tap Man because I suck, but I'm funny. You know, like, <laughs> and they were just all of a sudden in this space to where before when you ask somebody what Twitch is, they're like, what is a Twitch? Um but also like on the other side is I had so many friends going to work online and work from home that 
they weren't prepared digitally for it of like, hey, my MacBook from 2011 isn't working with Zoom or Citrix or a lot of these uh, mobile like cloud work solutions. And then then it became like, all right, Roger, you play video games. You're the tech dude, right? You can <laughs> figure out all my problems. Um, and, and it's really interesting. I think that COVID did bring uh, the pandemic really did bring more of a centered focus to a lot of these things that maybe just used to be uh, just us uh, or just this one kind of siloed community. And now it's branched out a lot more. And I think a lot of the the side things are are starting to become a little bit more to the limelight. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I just it's just how crazy how fast technology evolved over time, like even with just like just with your life cycle so far you know like that if you think back even though no, like you literally like if you think back that many years back before that like we were nowhere near any of this stuff and like back then we used to have like on those memory sticks like everyone remembers on your playstation and gamecube you know all those memory sticks used to only hold megabytes and now we're literally holding gigabytes for the same size and putting it into our pcs and or in any of these consoles that you don't even need those memory sticks anymore so it, it's just crazy to me to think about that but Jackson, do you have any experiences with the increase of gaming over time? Yeah, so definitely. So when I first came into OU, I remember seeing in the group me chats because every class is like the mandatory class of 2024, 2025 group me. Well, when I got in, I remember everybody was spamming this link to an Among Us group me server, and I joined. And it was it was kind of a mess because it's a group me. It's not the most organized app. So I was like, hey. If you guys are really trying to go to the next level, you ever heard of Discord? Uh, and they're like, no, we haven't, because a lot of these people, first-time gamers, they're just because you can get Among Us on your phone. It's free to play. Uh, you can play it whenever, wherever you want. Well, we created this Discord server and we got it. It was kind of funny for the first week watching all of these people who have never touched Discord before uh, trying to learn how to learn how to use it. And then after we added some bots, they were just like purely amazed by it. Uh, <laughs> I remember specifically we had it, we, we added the dad bot, which uh, if you're unfamiliar, it's will drop random dad jokes. Anytime you say like, I'm That's hungry, me. it will respond with hi, uh, hungry. I'm dad or something stupid like that. It's, it's a really cringy bot, but these people were just amazed by that. And we later evolved it to being a Jackbox server. It since died out, which kind of sucked, but um, it was kind of interesting to see all these people who have never touched video games before jumping on the bandwagon for that form of communication. So, No, I mean, and if anybody hates Among Us, I mean, they can hate it because it's popular, but truly, like, I think it was a great transition to just get a lot more people also just to kind of play in a game made by, like, literally four developers. Like that made such a game that was so impactful to the sense where like everyone was playing it. It's the thing. Like it was, it's been around. They do those little like fidget things now in the shape of an Among Us character. Like I, I don't know. Like it's just kind of crazy how much like an impact that that can have on everybody. But I was one of the things I was going to say about like the teaching grandma Zoom and everything was literally teaching my grandma like actually how to use the Zoom because she goes to a center because she's a little older. Uh, so she'll go to a center to like socialize and talk with everybody. But since COVID hit, they couldn't go out. So like we couldn't drop her off there anymore because a lot of them were uh, a lot more like more in the critical conditions to where you couldn't be around a lot of people. So we they had like Loteria online to where I had to help show her how to set up a Zoom call. And then she started freaking out because she was like, oh, my God, like everybody's in front of me. She was saying this in Spanish. She's like, look, that, that's my friend here. Like I talked to her this like and started telling me all the stories of everything. And uh, I, I had to explain to her that she had to mute herself while she was saying all these stories because she just kept talking and talking. So I, I think it's really interesting to see like kind of like the crossover from uh, video games to kind of like in such a bad time, we were able to grab video games, the thing that we love to like bring it forward to the forefront of us, uh, of us like us gamers to where everybody can like kind of just vibe out as he said and then get calls from people as as regular was saying saying like hey your tech support i'm like nah dude i just play the game but I, i'll try my best to help you out so do you guys think that video games will reach past the point of existing purely for entertainment and if so how just like you know some examples of like schools introducing games to help kids learn or anything else on that side isaac um 
I think they've already like gone past entertainment. Um, I think they they stopped being entertainment probably when Fortnite came around, cause cause that's that's where like, yep. cause Fortnite was like this big change from where it was like you now have cro- you have like crossplay, you have it's free to play, everyone's playing it, and like, and then there were and like if you go to like the newspaper, it's like. Or like any like old like media, all the boomer media is they're like, oh my god, all their kids are playing Fortnite. They're gonna be like, they're all gonna like kill each other or something. I don't know. Um, because, um, and like yes, they they remember all the things they said about GTA. They're like yes, this definitely applies to Fortnite. Um, but like one of the things they know to like a lot the like the thing they all said is like, they're all like talking and like making friends. Is this bad? Um, so it's uh, and that's and I like um, Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic. He's like, in the, um, his, his like big vision is what he calls the metaverse or whatever, or it's like, virtu- it's like the Matrix, but like you know you're in it um, and you want to be in it, um, where it's like everyone's interconnected and you like, I guess I don't know. You communicate through this, and that's kind of what's ended up being like what games are kind of turning into. Um, although I don't know if the games themselves are that communication medium, I'd probably be something like discord. Um, but they are kind of this tool for bringing people together. Um, and then you have, and then you have all the things developed for games because, um, being uh, game theory being applied to other things to try to make things like more addictive got to got to milk more money out of people so no and then i mean as you said like just think about this like ariana grande rick and morty master chief like everybody just starts colliding marvel superheroes you get to play as thanos with a glove like it, it's just fortnite i think as much as everybody means it as much as everybody like kind of like hates on just because it's popular and says it's for this or that. Like I promise that everybody in chat can remember the first time that they won on Fortnite. Can remember that first dub and kind of go back and just have that solid moment to before when you were getting shot at, it took you a while to kind of build up until now when you get shot once they build like freaking 20 stories high in the air. So I, it's, I think it's a, a perfect crossover for that, that as that metaverse that he wants to build. I think it's an interesting idea. I mean, who doesn't love a collab? Who doesn't love two things kind of like in the world? Like it might not be your taste, but the biggest Rick and Morty and Ariana Grande fan was just like, oh my God, I love Fortnite. I love Rick and Morty. I love Ariana Grande. Like this is perfect. Like it's not me. Like not everything can suit everybody. That's why I think they also do a bunch of collabs and crossovers with like the Travis Scott concert in there. They had a Marshmello concert. Like, I don't know. I think it's a, a crazy big thing. Now, Reg Dords, what do you think about any of that, about existing past entertainment? <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree with Isaac in the sense is I think we're already there. Um, but I think that we're there in some different ways. Gaming has gone from something that was very exclusive and something that uh, was very siloed off that people wanted to be almost insulated within to where now we're seeing the inclusivity of it and the ways that we can include people that may not otherwise be included. Um, so that's one like huge piece where at K through 12 and even the collegiate level, now we're creating spaces for people to, uh, be themselves kind of spread their wings and, and find a sense of maybe extrovertiveness that they didn't have before or a sense of confidence. And equally at the same time that we kind of heard yesterday, uh, from Thumper a little bit is that we're building better, uh, young men and women through gaming. And that's a huge thing with like the path to pro not being exactly nested here in the collegiate space yet. uh, The question becomes, well, why do we play games competitively? Why do we do this? And it's because we feel good at it. We feel like it's a, a a test or something, a puzzle we have to solve. And as coaches, as leaders, as mentors, that is an amazing step where we're teaching these people. Like we call it tilt. We don't want to tilt. We want to have the sense of mental fortitude to stay determined through the game. Now, if you can do that in a game like League of Legends or Siege, that's phenomenal. But now can I take that skill set that you're learning here and apply that to education? Can I apply that to your industry? Can I apply that to wherever it may be, whether it's communication, 
uh, tilt factor, in-game prowess, dedication, all these different skill sets that we can apply inside of esports. Now we can explore, uh, apply outside of that world with the use of mentorship and leadership. So I think that that's this, an amazing piece that where gaming becomes less about gaming and more about these life skills that can be carried onward when we're, we're too old like me uh, to just be good at shooters. I, my boomer <laughs> reflexes aren't there, but you know what? I don't tilt. So that's, that's a good point. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, well, since you're on the tilt factor right now, is there anything that you yeah. do to not tilt? Like, is there anything that you kind of go off that way to like, do you step away from the computer? Like, do you take your time? Do you just remember that like, oh, it's kind of just LP or like what, what kind of gets through your head whenever you try and get out of it? I, I think of it in two ways. Um, one, I am I'm a big fan of going out and uh, t- touching the grass. <laughs> as i call it uh you gotta go outside and touch some grass sometimes you gotta you gotta get up from the computer uh that's that's the work-life balance i think and i think the other thing that saves me from trying to tilt or what's given me that kind of fortitude is exactly that remembering it's a game and that you can only affect your own actions and maybe this is like boomer life skills here but it you can't control what happens to you but you can control how you react to it and that 90% of the time is what allows you to, to kind of move forward and turn towards the better, the better part of life when you can realize it's not your circumstances that you've created, but the outcome of those circumstances you can definitely control. Definitely very knowledgeable. Thank you so much for that. Actually, no, like legit, yeah. like it's a thing. Like it, everyone's got to hear it and everyone's got to kind of understand that it's not the whole world on top of your shoulders that you feel like it's not you're not in an arena of 50,000 people. You're in your room just trying to play some games. You know, you ain't got that oh. pressure and everyone just builds so much pressure on themselves. Ajax, do you have anything about uh, any of the existing past entertainment? Yeah, uh, kind of like I kind of want to touch on schooling a bit because – I saw somebody in chat mention it, but the biggest example you could see of video games talking at, like in the school environment right now, like, for example, is like the Minecraft Education Edition, uh, because they have I think what is it chemistry and I think English like it teaches English as well. I don't know it's math. That's what it was. Uh, even in even I've experienced uh, my teachers using video games to teach us like science and English. Funny enough. Uh, back in sixth grade, we had a teacher that used GMOD animations to teach us the scientific method. Okay. All <laughs> yeah, right. he was he was a bit out there, but it was pretty funny. Uh, our eighth grade English teacher <laughs> uh, used all of her slides were Minecraft themed. Funny enough, uh, I don't remember a lot of them because it was kind of confusing at the time. But it's what stuck with me is that hey, she's using video games to connect to the English class uh and even now like i still use video games to help me study uh my history of the built environment class which is like talks about ancient architecture that kind of stuff i use the civilization six civilopedia to study for that class (laughs) it sounds really (laughs) bad (laughs) no it works bro if it works it works that's actually really cool and interesting no that's a really good input Mm -hmm. but Outside of education, you can see platforms like Oculus, virtual reality, VR chat being used to conduct meetings in the office space uh, for these different companies that can afford to give all their employees o- Oculus headsets. It ain't cheap, but <laughs> hey, I, I can, mean, yeah. You could see the path going that way. I mean, like VR is already taking such a huge like jump in front of it to where literally, I mean, like if people don't know that. I mean, VR has its esport leagues. Like, there's different yeah. VR esport leagues that people see. To where actually, one of my friends was like, you know what? Like games, I don't really see as like a sport. This and that, but v- I can see VR sooner or later being like that. And I was like, oh, because you're like actually running around. He's like, oh yeah, this and that, but. I mean, that's just the normal critique that people have. But I mean, VR is already starting to kind of push the way to where actually like I do research, uh, communication research. And one of the things I do it is over in video games where recently there was an article that was just published saying how they used VR to help people cope with uh, some of their like anxiety and uh, to go about different things that way. Like it, it's a really long article that I can link y'all if you guys want it, but uh, they use VR to actually like kind of counteract some of the, 
the anxiety that uh, people gain from being in crowds and being around people and everyone else to where it like kind of puts you in that environment to where it starts helping you like walk through crowds and kind of go that way. So it actually had some really good results that way. And uh, I mean, I would say some of the other things where it's past entertainment is that there, I've also seen clinical trials and everything that's been rolling out for uh, some of these. They're called serious games in uh, scientific like literature that they put down. They call them serious games to where one of them is uh, to help counteract like uh, ADD and ADHD and severe cases in kids like literally as young as like eight years old where they play these games that actually start kind of reducing how uh, severe the ADHD and their ADD is. So there's like a lot of different pushes and a lot of things that people don't see it going past because I mean, we also support one of the causes here, at least for OU Esports is uh, Able Gamers. Whenever we do some of our charities, they make a bunch of uh, gaming rigs for people that uh, can't, who people who can't normally uh, play video games because they have their, their, their arms amputated off their leg or they have different, uh, what's it called, like cerebral palsy and different things like that to where they can't really uh, hold onto a controller or play it. So they make different rigs for, for them to be able to do it. So I, I think it is actually kind of past that to where it's more than just entertainment. It's just kind of how people want to kind of peek in and look at it, you know? So I, I think it's a pretty good time. But in what ways is a video game more than just a game for you personally, Isaac, like on your own, like on your own time? Like, how do you personally feel that it's just a, that it's more than just a game? Well, um, it's like you, you care about it. Like you care about your your result. Um, you care about how you're doing, um, and it can be hard. Like you can get tilted. At, um, so that that's kind of the is and even if it doesn't matter like let's say um you're just playing cod whatever multiplayer no zero stakes you're it's just like yeah i'm sh about here to shoot some people or something um relax but it'll but it becomes kind of um uh, you know a bit more than um you start investing, you're invested in your performance and it becomes more uh, than just kind of a game and you start caring and, you, you know, you get tilted or whatever. Um, but then there's there's also like, um, even, but it's, it's really investment, I guess. Um, I, I, so speaking of like modern, call it Modern Warfare 2019, I care about that game more than I care about a lot of games because I spent, um, frankly, too much time uh getting the mastery camo or damascus in that game um um relatable uh even though i there's I, there's a lot of things i can't stand about that game uh it's very much a love-hate relationship but i still you know care about it or whatever um and so yeah but it's investment no, yeah, I mean, hey, I've, I've, everyone's got it for themselves on what, what games they like to enjoy and play. And it's just really up to the, the beholder that what game they want to kind of put themselves through over and over again because all of us reach that kind of crossroad of like, oh, this game makes me so angry, but I still enjoy playing it and I still love playing it. So, Roger, is there anything for you that you uh, video games is more than a game for you personally? Absolutely. Um for me, I was so I was in the Marines for about a decade, and, and during that time, I'd been all over the world. Uh, I'd gotten to do a lot of different things in terms of logistics, and when I got out, um, I was very happy with myself and what I'd done in my military career. But I didn't want to do that anymore. And the question became like, what What do I want to do? Who am I now as an adult um, out in the world again? And I really didn't know. But gaming had always been something that was fun to me, and that I kind of uh, grew into more and more and I'd been lucky to meet some friends that had shown me like esports and what what this big old world is and I was like well I'm way too old to be a gamer I'm not going to be like you know uh, grandpa uh, gamer pro player at the age of like 50 or something maybe but it doesn't look like it's in the cards um, so how could I turn something that I liked into 
a career path or how could I turn this into something that was just more than sitting behind a computer. And a lot of that was uh, through production, through uh, a really great friend of mine, uh, Ariel, uh, who showed me like, here's all the great things that you can do inside of communications and gaming. Uh, this is how you can do TO, shoutcasting, all this, these different pieces. And really it became a lot like freedom of expression. And when people say like, what is gaming? I, I feel like I'm going to send them on like my 25 minute dissertation with the PowerPoint <laughs> that I've, I've started. Um, because the reality is, and, and one of the biggest things that I always go back to is when I was a, a recruiter in the Marines, I'd always say, when you think about joining the Marines, the two questions that have to be answered is one, are you going to be better for joining this service? And two, is the service going to be better for having you be a part of it? And that's really what I think about with gaming as well is that great gaming is a lot of fun. And as you take a serious turn into the competitive side or into the industry, uh, how can we make you better for being a part of this industry, being a part of this game and how does the game community or the group become better for you being a part of it? And I think that's where we really get beyond uh, keyboards and controllers and start getting into hearts and minds and, and what makes this industry so great to me. I mean, that's what we love about it. That's like the next step that people don't see that it is more than just a game. And that's why, I mean, this is the perfect place to talk about it and kind of go out that way. Is there a, maybe another way that other, like for just a game, like another specific way that you could go on about too on this same topic? Um, Like what else, like just in the game specifically that makes me go like, yeah, this is awesome. Uh, yeah yeah or like that makes it just more than just a game for you other than that yeah. like is there another reason or is that like the the main sole purpose of of yours i think the the other thing for me is that it's it's constantly changing i think the way i explained it to a friend of why i love league of legends so much it's like imagine you play football but every two weeks football changes <laughs> you have to relearn how to play the game uh, it's a thousand percent what's so great about it is every two weeks we reset every two weeks is trying to find something new it's a new rubik's cube and not only how do i measure up in terms of my hands and, and mental acuity but how well can i read and how much can i think and find out and, and kind of get ahead of the game and that's why i love like shout casting for your league of legends so much and doing analysis because there's so much to learn and every time you think you've got it beat something changes and you have to start all over again. And shameless plug, if you'd like to see me and Regdor <laughs> cast tonight at 6.45, uh, we will be casting the League of Legends game to hear us. So shameless plug, shameless plug. But in what ways <laughs> are the video games is more than just a game for you, Ajax, personally? Well, more than just a game. So it's become a way for me to communicate uh, with my friends because all of, a large majority of us from the from my friend group have all gradu graduated high school so we're kind of spread everywhere right now we have some people up in okc i'm down here in neumann we have one of our guys out in hinton uh and just being able to video game keeps that a, a way that we can all sit here and communicate and still talk to one another even though we're i don't even know how far away that is i don't know <laughs> the distance but we're far away from each other and it makes it a lot easier thanks to video games that we can keep that communication up because you don't want to lose friends or contact with people that you've known for eight years. It's not fun. Uh, I also, another way I, it's more than just a game is that I use it as a stress reliever. Uh, I just will like after a long day of classes, I'll just boot up call of duty and go in there and just play some multiplayer for a bit, kind of release some of that pent up frustration from an exam that didn't go well, or a teacher that went around in circles for three hours on his lecture and, <laughs> didn't get anything across uh then another way it's more than just a game is that sometimes like it, it, you could also use it as like a workout because kind of looping back around to virtual reality real quick uh you have games like beat saber where if i've been sitting down too long i'll go into my living room boot it up and i'll play that for a bit just so i can get up and stretch and burn some calories so Oh, yeah. I mean, that's definitely a way that like people don't really see it. It's another aspect into the gaming world that people got to take. But with the relationships you were saying to where it's more than uh, just a game, at least for me personally, is that like I can load up into any game with a, a random person from like at least certain games have servers. But sometimes someone across the country from you, maybe even the world, depending on it. 
and then I start talking to them or making jokes or like they play the same games I do that or they're playing the same guy I do. So we both enjoy it and we're both playing it. And it's just those little like funny moments to where like me and John, the competitive director, are just playing Valorant. And uh, it's kind of like a gun game to where every time you get a kill, it goes to the next gun, next gun, next gun to where it always ends with a knife usually. And uh, there is this one random person on our team by himself and he was getting chased by like five of them and i just screamed in the mic for the first time like hey we're coming for you sova we're coming and then we then we just hear him talk back he's like i need y'all help please it's like this little <laughs> gamer moments that like just like i i think those are the ones that make it just a game because or more than a game for me personally at least is these like these are other people that you're playing with it's not just these computers that you kind of see or these codes that you kind of got so i i have a great time with those little moments and that's what makes it more than just a game and reminds me that it's not just ones and zeros all throughout of it now what would you say to someone that believes that being a gamer automatically means you are lazy or unproductive isaac is there anything that comes to your mind that you want to like counteract it when you hear that negative stereotype i think it's just stupid to say like um because uh it's it, it's like you don't you don't say anyone to who plays chess that they're being lazy or unproductive um and they it's just um this is a dumb analogy but a lot of gaming is chess but with hand eye coordination required um and that's uh and so you, you you do have to it is a um you're not just sitting there idly like staring at some tv or whatever you're doing things you're thinking you're uh you you know you're coordinating your hands and your eyes and your ears um you, you have to have generally you have to have some sort of a strategy um to achieve whatever you want to achieve and a lot of times the games have some sort of a grind and you're trying to achieve some goal in the game um whether that you know whether that means you know i'm gonna hit radiant and valorant or i'm gonna or whatever equivalent rank and whatever game you play um or i'm gonna you know i'm gonna get the I'm gonna get damascus or dark matter uh or you're gonna uh or what have you um and even even if that is like okay that's cool you're using your brain but it's still useless um, even if you think that it's like you does, it doesn't hurt you. It like, you're not, if you're, it's, uh, if you're ma making sure if it's a way you're caring for yourself, that's not bad. That's good. You want to make sure you're taking care of yourself. Um, so if gaming, especially considering now, especially as we've, you know, gaming is really a communications medium as much as anything else, like you're, keep your meeting people you're keeping in touch with people um and you, you kind of growing your relationship with them um that's very much not being lazy or unproductive if that makes sense definitely i mean that's that's what what gets us through everything that we kind of talk about throughout the whole entire time is like counteracting this stigma because i mean these games uh enable critical thinking though people don't understand that when you're in that stressful impact situation your last man alive or or 1v1 in a war zone match and it's you and you know this got this other squad like your heart beeping a thousand percent and these things are actual like motors in your mind that get going and uh with your whole body feeling that that tension and stress so like there's things there's blood pumping everything's going around it to where you're in that and the unproductive is just kind of where you want to channel your time some people channel it to working out every day, as I always say, and some people channel it to spending thousands of hours reading some books. But we decide to spend thousands of hours loading up on some games. And it's just because people see it as like a negative light where they're like, oh, why would you do all that? Now, Raja, do you have anything that would counteract any of these uh, stigmas or anything about automatically means you're lazy or unproductive once you say you're a gamer? Yeah, I think that we're we're slowly starting to see some differences in this thought process of what uh, a gamer is and what they look like. It's one of my favorite experiences in life is talking to people about it. One of my friends was like, uh, 
like you talk about gaming on your first date, I say a hundred percent. I talk about <laughs> gaming. I talk about esports. I'm about it because it's it's who I am, and it's a lot of the reasons why I'm, I'm here today, and I'm so thankful for it. Um, but I also do it because it's maybe it's not thought of that way, you know? Like, oh man, this guy he was in the Marines. Uh, you know, he's this hardcore outdoorsy type. But I also love gaming. I also love going dancing. I love doing all these different things, and it's just one piece of me. And I think that the more that we have this realistic talk, number one, about the stigma of like what a gamer is, uh, it is so holistically important because we do so many different things in our lives. But number two is I think that as esports continues to evolve and it comes more to the main state, now we see more of the, the auxiliary paths around it. It always goes like, when does gaming stop being gaming that we talked about earlier? Or how are all these different ways that you get into the industry and a lot of that does come from behind a computer. Uh, like you said, like I don't spend thousands of hours uh, playing League of Legends because I think I'm going to be the next uh, solo queue, you know, general sniper. No, I think, I think I play it because I need a deeper understanding and I need to understand the mechanics, but also it's my, uh, it's my stress reliever. After a long day, I can sit down and I can be in this space where I can do what I want to do. It's, you know, it's where I find my center because this is like another Roger Fuchs moment, but every day, like people get pulled, like your center of this like circle, like an egg, you're doing great. This is like your flow state. You're, you're doing so many amazing things and life stresses pull us out and away from one another, uh, from our center. And everybody has a different way of how they get back to center. And for a lot of us, it is gaming. It's, where I can go and I can just feel Zen and nothing else matters. Um, but I think that we're, you know, kind of as the summary, I think we're getting away from the idea that gamers are like when I was growing up, the people that lived in their grandmother's basement and ate uh, hot pockets and Tostitos. And that was it. Uh, and never saw the, the light of day, but no, now we're seeing people on, you know, uh, dancing with the stars and, and we're seeing streamers and all these different avenues that are helping bring us to the limelight and say, no, we can do them more than just that. We're more than just a pretty face. We're also gamers and we can also do all these other great things. I mean, just like that, as you're saying, like, I mean, Kyler Murray just signs with FaZe Clan. Kyler Murray is literally uh, plays on the Cardinals NFL player. Like no. people don't see him and they're like, oh, lazy, unproductive. They're like, oh, no, he has crazy work ethic. Is this and that? And then he plays games so like it's the same thing when he goes on stream or does anything else on that mm -hmm. sense to where it's more than just being the lazy unproductive as they always tell us now ajax do you have anything else with that's lazy unproductive that they say about us but it's not true so funny enough i was actually going to bring up kyler murray uh, <laughs> <What> <laughs> thanks, the... <laughs> so, thanks for stealing the talking point brandon but... <laughs> hey go for it why my bad dude jump in you there's more to talk about with him he's got a lot going on <laughs> yeah no i was, I was gonna say that like, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Like there is some gamers out there that are lazy and unproductive, uh, but then again, that can be the said the same thing about like a businessman. He after work he goes home and doesn't do his job and he just watches Netflix all night. That can be anyone. So just saying that being a gamer is lazy and unproductive, I don't believe that because especially after joining OU Esports in this year. I think this has been the busiest I've ever been because between being virtual reality ambassador, stream team, and Warzone coach, I'm constantly on my toes. Something's constantly happening, and you got to keep your head straight with it. Another sports star, by the way, that just got involved with uh, esports was Kevin Durant. I think he's now a co owner of the New York Subliners. Yeah. But. He's he's been there for a while, but yeah, oh, yes. it is good. It is a new. He's, he's had that nice. contract for a bit. I brought it up yesterday. No, I, it, it's just one of those things. I mean, just like a lot of people, at least if you're if you're tuning in from San Antonio, Texas, where I'm from, uh, USAA, where everyone's at USAA, they actually were at one point with the CDL. Uh, they were partnerships with them right now on different teams for the Wounded Warriors project and for other things that go on like that to where those are very productive causes that everybody else uh, gives recognition to later on, like without gaming. And now when the gaming's tied to it, it should be the same way. It should be the yeah. same way where it's not lazy or, or unproductive. Because, I mean, to me, like... 
it's always been so weird because like I, like people find out that like I'm like a, a, a game I'm a nerd like I'm super in anime and super into the whole gaming and esports and that's the thing and then they're like like oh I wouldn't I wouldn't take you for that I was like oh is it because I'm not like the normal stereotypical look in your head right now or like what like what's wrong with it like everybody's a gamer everybody watches some anime at times here and there like I mean it's becoming even more towards the pop culture kind of moving forward with the Netflix incorporating a lot of them onto their site like we're gonna see a lot more gaming and esports uh, venues and everything else start pushing to the forefront to where people don't even know that if you go down to uh, Dallas, Texas, right in front of the stadium where they usually have all the boxing matches is Envy's headquarters right there. And they just see the big bu the building next to it and they have the end. And it's just like, what's that? And I was like, yeah, I took a photo with it. My friend was like, why are you taking a photo in front of this building? I was like, dude, this is like Envy's headquarters. This is like an esports organization's like headquarters that I'm taking a photo in front of. And they're like, oh, okay. Like it, people, it's like hidden gems everywhere that people like, you don't know what that building is until it's either in your chamber or in your area. But I mean, I just want to say thank you guys, everybody from having their input from Isaac, from Bregdor, from Ajax coming in and saying everything. But this is coming to the end of our panel. Uh, thank you all again for seeing y'all's inputs and thank you for everybody for watching. But right now we're going to jump on, we're going to jump next to is uh, the COD game. We're going to be playing Call of Duty on the next Red River Clash coming up on Longhorn Gaming's channel. So go out there, support, you know, the ones the ones who are going to win. Oh, you, you know, Boomer Sooner, you know, sorry, Isaac, I just have to be a little Homer and bias right there. But uh, everyone swing on over to the Longhorn Gaming channel to then see this great series that's going to come on uh, and then continue the rivalry onto these other games. So thank you guys so much. And uh, we'll see you all there in a bit. Uh, this is that Will Brandon, and this is Ajax, this is Regdor, and this is Isaac. So we'll be seeing you.